You are listening to Castles and Cryptids, where the castles are haunted and the cryptids are cryptic as fuck. <laughs> I'm Alana. And I'm Kelsey. <laughs> and I might know what episode this is if I look at my paper. Oh, nope. It's on the Patreon episodes. <laughs> oh, it's oh, 80 something. <laughs> 85. It could be 85. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to possible episode 85. Yeah, because last one was 84, How the Turn Tables. <laughs> yeah. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, we had some difficulty recording, so it was edited in several parts. And mm, then yeah. I spliced in a little yeah audio later because I kept saying, damn, I should have had the audio. It really helps. I don't know, set the tone. Yeah. Yeah. I got real sad after I looked up pictures for the website oh. of like the interrogation and like saw Ryan's face. It just made me really yeah. sad. Yeah, I do feel like, like I said to you, that maybe you have to downplay it a little bit for it to be an unexpected twist as I kind of yeah. wanted to present it. But, but yeah, it's definitely like, as you put it on the episode thing, I'm sure most people have seen it by now. It's a little more, it does look like a little more than a black eye when you. Yeah, his like entire him. eye is like completely swollen. It looks like a pair of yeah. fake lips. Like his eye looks like a pair of fake lips. Like... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's quite black and blue. Like it's very, very dark. Yeah. It's... Yeah. Yeah, the EMTs, I did put in the clip because the EMTs did realize he had had quite a bit of trauma, but. Yeah, jeez. That was yeah. a rough one. Yeah, um, when I first went in to do the thumbnail, I looked and I saw that the episode was only an hour and a half. And I went, oh my god, how was it only an hour and a half? Like, <laughs> did we finally manage to do an episode that isn't two hours long? Because it's been like months oh, and months. Oh, no. And then that was probably when I parts went into one and two <laughs> edited only. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it said one, two, and three, so I really thought oh, all okay. three parts were there. And then, oh, yeah, okay. when I clicked into it, I didn't realize like part four was missing and stuff. So, part yeah. three was like eleven minutes. I was like, "What happened to our recording? We were really having issues." Yeah, <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, that was the one. <laughs> yeah, it, like kicked us out or something. Again, I think it must have because it was like yeah. middle of a sentence, and then <laughs> so we apologize if it was a little choppy. I did my best. <laughs> La like last night, I'm like, oh, I need to post it, but I want to give it one last, you know, maybe re-listen, but at the at the break points. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, it was fine. So <laughs> this is our. Uh, Christmas episode. It yes. Almost Christmas Eve when you guys are listening to this, or possibly after, depending. Yeah, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah this will come out on the 23rd. Festivus! Or no. Yeah, that's Festivus, yeah. right? Is it? I think so. I think it's Christmas Eve Eve. <sighs> it was the date that some things reported the attack on Ryan Waller being, which I. Mm -hmm. I had to go back and add in that that's what I was trying to say at one point, but then totally lost my train of thought. Oh. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so happy holidays. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about the dark true crime episodes. You know how it goes. Um, if you're here for the paranormal and mysterious episodes, welcome. <laughs> These are your favorite. <laughs> it should yeah. be a fun episode. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I might have a, a fun fact or two. Ooh. Sort of. I, I have actually been listening to um, a lot of this one called Well, That's Interesting. And so I, I heard mm. a lot of fun, weird facts and stories this week. <gasps> <laughs> As you tend to do when you listen to these kind of things. But, you know, you gotta just pick just one sometimes. Um, yeah. But like, <laughs> I would say one of the ones that stood out the most was they were talking about a time a colonoscopy was performed and a ladybug was found 
A and yeah. B persons. Innards in the colon captured on the picture on the camera. Uh, was it live? It appeared to be, and I thought yeah. it entered directly through the opening it was closest to, but they figure maybe it went down his throat at night or something. Huh. And there was something with, oh, because of the colonoscopy, I think the person, the patient was drinking a lot of the Pedialyte. Yeah. Shit your pants out diarrhea, diuretic yep. <laughs> medication. And so it was flushing everything out so it didn't have a chance to be digested by like the stomach acid. Okay, I was going to ask about that. Okay, so that yeah. was probably diluted enough that it didn't. Hmm. Apparently. Because Weird. It, it looked alive and I think they got it out. But also it didn't appear to be the only time something like that had happened. Like there was also... <laughs> some small dead roach that was found in someone else yeah really it's a rabbit hole you could go down if you want uh, to. <laughs> i think i'd much rather look up funny stories about people putting stuff up their butt and then going to the emergency room they have a lot of butt stuff so shout yeah. out to the where i got that fun fact well that's interesting pod it's like well that's interesting <laughs> and that's what they're yeah. called and there's a lot of like this person put that in their butt like and this was found in a butt or this person survived this and just i'm like oh, sciencey facts <laughs> yeah the one of the most dangerous things i can think of that i think was on maybe a like it wouldn't have been mystery diagnosis but maybe it was like one of the mm -hmm. er shows that was like along that lines on like discovery yeah and oh, yeah. yeah a guy showed up to the emergency room and he had a light bulb up his butt oh was... my god Big like you're end in or what yeah and then it's like you're 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 a little dangerous like you clench too hard and that thing's gonna break and oh that's gonna hurt buddy like yeah that's what's isn't that one of the adams family like yeah uh, uh uncle fester fester yeah <laughs> just he does the light bulb. With the light bulb. yeah because he can no do uncle fester no <laughs> yeah uh oh my god that does remind me though i was gonna mention uh <laughs> i don't know if you guys have watched it but it just dropped on uh prime and that's the movie Ooh. everything everywhere all at once Oh god, it's on our extensive prime list. Yes, but no, we haven't watched it yet. <laughs> the sheer amount of drugs that the people that like thought of that movie had to have consumed to have written oh. that script is like insane. <laughs> like yeah, it, gave, it gave me that <laughs> feeling with the title and you're like, "Okay, so it's like a multiverse." <laughs> it's Even so much multiverse. Than Marvel. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but for them to it's not really a spoiler but for them to like universe jump i guess their consciousness i guess it's kind of like mm -hmm. sensate where they can kind of go in and like if you know martial arts they can connect with themselves in another oh. universe and then they will like learn the martial arts that like their consciousness oh, has wow. in the end of the universe so okay but then for them to, to like jump um to the alternate like dimensions to access this information they have to do something that's described always as being one of the most incredibly like just uncommon or like weirdest thing you can possibly think of and that's always what like <laughs> unlocks it so like oh. they're doing weird stuff like at one point, somebody has to blow on somebody, like, blow into somebody's nose. Another one, they have to, like, pee themselves. One, the guy has to give himself four paper cuts. And he's, like, so he's, like, intentionally trying to give himself a paper cut. And he, like, can't. Because um, he's trying to do it intentionally. And then another one involved uh, a certain award that looked very much like a butt plug. Um, that then oh. has to be used, basically, as a butt plug. So there's a scene where a guy is, like running and then literally like mid air like pulls down his pants and you could see he's gonna land like ass first onto the award and then like somebody <laughs> body checks him so it doesn't happen and then you see like another guy running towards the same award and you're like what even is this movie 
Is this <laughs> like what are they gonna call that sport? Plug vaulting, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. There's a scene that involves oh. a girl fighting off two guys with two like two foot long dildos, like just ginormous, and she's like using them like nunchucks, and then, <laughs> um. Yeah, and then the scene where the the guy successfully gets that award up his butt, and then another guy shows up with something else up his butt, and then they both know kung fu, because that was, like, the thing that unlocked their ability to use kung fu. So then it proceeds to have a whole fight scene where these two guys have very visible, like, one's pixelated out, so you, like, can't see his junk, but the other guy, you can see it's, like, through his pants. Because we still wear pants. Oh. But there's, like, a whole fight scene where these things are knowingly, like, shoved up their ass. Uh, so weird. God, was this rated, like, NC-17? It must or have. Geez. There was, yeah, there was, like, some weird stuff. And they're just like, yeah. I might have to warn Pat. <laughs> it's, I was, like, watching it and I was like, this is, like, the cinematography, beautiful, all, like, that kind of oh. stuff. It was good. The acting was really good. It was fun, but it was like the amount a of chorus of angels as they glide down. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Oh my God. Very bizarre. <laughs> Sounds like it. Crunching but... tiger hidden dildo. dildo. Yeah, <laughs> we named it. <laughs> what I think one of my oh, favorite God. just stupid things that literally made me just burst out laughing was there's one part where she is like the kind of the kung fu thing. She unlocks it and it's like this whole thing about like, I, I can kill you so many ways just with just my pinky. And so when yeah. she unlocks the thing, it like shows her pinky and she like flexes her pinky and her pinky gets a <laughs> tiny bicep. And you're just like, oh, and it's like, it was so stupid, but it got like a tiny bicep all veiny and it was yeah. like pumps out <laughs> yeah and then suddenly she's like killing people with her pinky and you're like my god <laughs> it's thumb wars yeah it was or great thumb, thumb wrestling <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah very oh wild i was like god. watching it last night like right before sleep and i was like watching good what's going on like just so weird you must have weird dreams <laughs> yeah <laughs> Not weirder than the movie, but (laughs) (laughs) like that horror movie, that men one, that was pretty weird. Yes, it was. I ended up watching that. I haven't rewatched it, so I can't remember a lot. But then I'm like, oh yeah, when talking about it to people, we yeah, that was the one. She's in that cottage or whatever, and that weird guy. I yeah, there's some scenes that stick right out to me. Like she's in that culvert, and then she's like singing a bit and it's echoing and it looks like mm. no one's there but then yeah. something just seems to sit up from like the rocks sorry like, yeah that was spoiler. creepy <laughs> yeah we watched um what is it hellraiser we watched the new hellraiser the other night that was all right I is that the one but the pinhead oh, and the, yeah the boxy thing <laughs> i watched the first one kind of around halloween for the first time just the first one yeah like yeah from the 80s or whatever i, I yeah. don't think i've seen that one or maybe a while ago i've heard of it and I was yeah. Like, yeah i know what it's about i know enough we can just watch the other one when pat was like do you want to watch the old one i was like nah. <laughs> yeah i got it <laughs> but yeah it was i don't know it was pretty good for some reason, I thought that was a TV show, the new one, but it's a movie. Yeah. Oh, I think it was just called Hellraiser or Hellraiser. Maybe there's a subtitle, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um. But it kept my attention. It wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. Hellraiser. Twenty. Nope, just called Hellraiser. Twenty twenty two. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've seen Covering. some of the stuff online about it. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. Anyway, we have, yeah, we have a lot of things to plow through on Amazon Prime, so I'll keep you updated. Yeah. <laughs> I will too. Yeah. <laughs> this week we have some special Christmas uh, traditions and folklore, I guess, from around the world. 
my favorite. <laughs> yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. I think so. It's like a, a lot of different cultures have it and celebrate it a little differently. <laughs> yeah, I ran into a lot of different lo- local things um, for mine, which was kind of cool. Like local to their area? Yeah. <laughs> Not like our area. No, no, we (laughs) don't really have, I guess, like, like, North and South America doesn't really have this. This is more, like, European uh, figure. I feel like North America, yeah, we just, like, ran with it and just capitalized the fuck out of it, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so I did a bunch of research about Krampus which was pretty interesting. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, <laughs> Say it with me now. Krampus. No. <laughs> I really only knew about him from a, I won't say like terrible Christmas horror movie. Um, I watched, it's actually called Krampus and it was done in 2015 uh, with a good cast. Oh, okay, uh, the 2015 one. Is that with... um? The one from Hereditary. Uh... Yeah, oh. Tony Collette. She's in it. Yes. And okay, yeah. Yeah, Adam Scott's in it. And, okay, yeah. Uh, David Kochner. Uh, he was in The Office. And then Allison oh, Tolman. Oh, yeah, I think it's Keckner or something <clears throat> weird. Keckner. Okay. Only because um, they might have said it on The Office Ladies. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> And then Allison Tolman, who was in the first season of Fargo. She was the lady cop. Um, I like her. She's been in a few other things. She's pretty good. Um, Oh, okay. Yeah. It was a fun movie. That was probably my first experience learning about Krampus. Um, Yeah. It wasn't bad. Yeah, because there's there's been a few movies that have kind of leaked it into normal normal pop culture does that make sense yeah say like yeah. north american yeah yeah modern modern lore yeah <laughs> uh so krampus himself for a bit of background is described as a horned anthropomorphic figure from central and eastern alpine folklore in europe uh, he's horny <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, He's featured in folklore found in Austria, Bavaria, Croatia, Czech Republic, Hungary, Northern Italy, which I found interesting. Italy is like thrown in there. Yeah, Um, just Northern. (laughs) Yeah. The autonomous province of Trento and South Tyrol. Hmm and slovakia they sound europe adjacent <laughs> yeah i don't know also slovakia and slovenia which okay. we've done some true crime there episode yeah. which is cool yeah. and during the holiday season krampus is said to visit different houses and towns to scare children who have misbehaved during the year uh, he's gonna krampus your <laughs> style <laughs> yeah well <laughs> It's kind of wild. If you're bad. (laughs) Yeah, only if you're bad. So, um, the name Krampus is thought to come from either Bavarian Krampen, meaning dead or rotten, or more commonly accepted is the German Kramp or Krampen, meaning claw. Um, Because he does actually have claws, so. I've heard that one, I feel like, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. Crampon. Yeah. <laughs> hmm The specific origins of Krampus are said to be somewhat unclear. Some folklorists and anthropolo- anthropologists, <laughs> anthropologicalists, uh, <laughs> believe it may have pre-Christian origins and that may it may have originated in Germany with celebrations Mm. involving Krampus dating back possibly as far as the 6th or 7th century CE or common era although 
that's just kind of believed because there aren't any actual written sources um, before the end of the 16th century. So okay. he's at least from the 16th century at the end of it. Yeah. Um, so still very old. And a lot of sources say that Krampus is believed to have been part of pagan winter solstice rituals. That according to legend, Krampus is the son of hell. H-E-L, the Norse god of the underworld. Which uh, is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, because, okay, I've heard of hell. She's, mm-hmm. yeah, one of the uh, sibling to, she's Loki's kid, whatever. I think she's in Marvel as so. Hela. Oh, but yeah. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. I didn't know so that. There's some pagan, like, winter solstice rituals. Um, That's ha- how it kind of evolved, because by the end of the 17th century, Krampus was incorporated into Christian winter celebrations by pairing Krampus with St. Nicholas and oh. which we'll kind of get into because I kind of um the one website I looked at had like a rundown about uh St. Nicholas and kind mm-hmm. of the evolution of Santa which was kind of cool oh, because cool, the legend cool. of Krampus actually goes with Santa quite a bit um nice. which we'll kind of get into but some believe In one of the sources I read, they said that uh, they believe that Krampus is actually just a species of creatures or demons and not just one specific entity. Um, So it could be like a species. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it ties into something that comes up in my notes a little bit, maybe. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> Put a pin in that. <laughs> yeah. Um, for St. Nicholas and this whole, um, because Krampus also visits children, um, kind of mm-hmm. like people view uh, Santa uh, Claus as doing. Um, yeah. There was a really good rundown I copied from the visitcroatia.com website. It was actually a write-up they had about Krampus, but they included this information which I didn't find anywhere else. And I felt it was pretty interesting um, mm-hmm. to talk about Christmas because kind of like how how Santa came about, I guess. Santa's origin story. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is just copied directly from the Visit Croatia website. It said that the real-life St. Nicholas was a Greek-born bishop in the late 3rd century who served in Myra, a small Roman town in what is now modern-day Turkey. Oh, Turkey, Turkey. Yeah. He was known (laughs) for his wealth and generosity. He He developed quite the reputation for helping people in need. It went on saying that today, St. Nicholas's Day is celebrated in his honor on December 6th, the anniversary of his death in the mid-4th century. And, yeah, on this day, children children in Central Europe hang stockings or put out their shoes, hoping for a gift from the generous saint, which I've heard before. Um, Stockings and stuff? And putting the shoes outside um, is a very European thing. Yeah. Yes. Um, Yeah. Shoes and socks. It all makes sense. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Now we make sure the stockings in North America are like gigantic. Too big for anyone's feet. (laughs) Give me that many. (laughs) Yeah. The American image of the Santa Claus comes primarily from the poem a visit from St. Nicholas by Clement Clark Moore, which okay. described, yeah, uh, this poem described St. Nicholas as a jolly old elf, said he was dressed <laughs> all in fur, had a round belly, a white beard, and rosy cheeks. And that poem was the inspiration for artist Haddon uh, Sundblom who created the modern image of Santa for Coca-Cola's 1931 Thirst Knows No Season advertising campaign. So that's, (laughs) 
like crazy that that's how like the image of like the fat jolly santa came about is this poem and then like coca-cola advertisement in the 30s yeah the modern yeah token santa that like you're like well no we all know what he looks like it's like from what though oh that one poem i guess that got turned into and fucking coca-cola like like a commercial for or an ad for coca-cola like no wonder coca-cola like dominated all those like the polar bears and everything at such a big christmas like thing yes they always do that here i don't know yeah but yeah i think they're known for it oh my god I did see one. I think there was one. Speak. This kind of ties in, actually. Coca Cola mm. Santa. I think it was uh, in Scotland because I was reading about. Oh. They have a national drink called Iron Brew. That's like a. Oh. I think it's more like sort of like an orange pop, more okay. than like a cola, but like with some other citrus or something going on. It sounds pretty mm. good. But yeah. like I don't know, they're always like, yeah, it's made of iron and, <laughs> and what? Wow. And then like, but the, they were like, this article I was reading was like, you could watch this ad campaign they had, and it was like this snowman flying through the air with this child, and yeah. it's all like happy and Christmassy kind of and whimsical ish, and but like you know, kind of nostalgic. And then they're like, oh, but I wouldn't give you my iron brew, and he's like. He's, the snowman was like no definitely not and like i don't know i remember the kid was just like then left on the ground like he let go of what? his hand or something oh my gosh it just like ended so dark that i was like oh that was a weird commercial. weird like i love that shit where you're just like here's a dark advertising campaign right uh I'm not doing it justice. I'm sorry, but it was very strange. <laughs> I have to try and find it. Maybe we could post it on the website or something. Yes. Oh, which I speaking of things to link, I'll I'll send it to you. And I I told you off air that I you sent me that forensic files that you were talking about yes. last time with oh. the crazy doctor putting a tube of someone else's fucking blood in his arm, and that was insane. And if anyone yeah. else wants to watch it, it was what season six, episode eighteen, Bad Blood, I think. Yeah, it it's on YouTube. Um, yeah, the original Forensic Files. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very oh creepy. I didn't like the picture where they're like, um, I had forgotten about it being in his arm for spoiler alert five years. Um, in between the two yeah. times they tried to test his blood, so that's how oh, they yeah. figured it out sexual assaults predator yeah like he was a doctor and he was being accused of like raping his vic- like patient yeah he had like... drugged her or something so she was unconscious yeah. but when yeah. they tested the blood the second time it was like very like gross and degraded because it had yes. been in his arm for five years and they thought the vein seemed weirdly big i'm like yeah no wonder <laughs> but then they show because they videotaped um both times that they got his blood um yeah so the one where they showed it and he's like rolling up his sleeve and then they like yeah. pause the video and they're like you can see they're like yeah very clearly like in the video you can they didn't catch it at the time but looking back like yes. you can see the tube protrude from like the crook of his elbow oh yeah i had to look away because it's so protruding and like Yes, yeah, so it know. freeze frames and it looks like he's like got one vein that's like juice junkie to fuck. Yes, and it's just like, like throbbing out of his arm. But you're like, no, that's oh. bigger than even a normal vein would look. Yeah, it's insanity. It's so gross. It was crazy. And it was, I didn't know it was a Canadian case, but. Yeah, I didn't remember I'm sorry, that I don't either. know if we're going to cover it. We just. <laughs> yeah. It, it almost would yeah. be worth it. There was, there was more to it, obviously, but. Yeah. I don't know. You guys let us know. Watch it or <laughs> maybe we'll cover mm-hmm. it for Patreon or something if it's really, yeah. if you really want it. But yeah, that was nuts. Yeah. She was a fighter. I was like, good for you, girl. Because like, yeah. almost the statute of limitations would run out by the time they get him. Yeah. Keep <sighs> keep going after him. Mm-hmm. Um. But back to back to jolly old Santa Claus. Um, oh right, I'm sorry, I took it there. Yeah. 
still from the visit croatia website just because this stuff was like so fun it had more saying that the name santa claus um according to them evolved from the dutch nickname for saint nicholas which was sinterklaas um oh, okay yeah that sounds familiar spelled s-i-n-t-e-r-k-l-a-a-s and ah. They're, they were a fan of those double letters. <laughs> yeah. So that was their nickname, Sinterklaas, which was a shortened form of Sint Nicholas. So they basically just spell it Sint and then Nicholas with the double A-S at the end. Oh, okay. And then also it said Santa's nickname, Chris Kringle, can be traced back to German Chris Kringle or Christ Kindle. Uh... <laughs> Christ on a Kindle. <laughs> yeah, it's like spelled K R I S T K I N D L or C H I R S T K I N D L. Um, both of these, which literally directly translate to Christ Child. Um, so that's what Chris Kringle oh, uh, may originate from. And then in Germany, the Christ Child is a gift bearing angel. The spirit of Christmas, who delivers presents on Christmas. Um, yeah. Okay. And this tradition an was... Hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, an angel that's going out and delivering the presents. And this tradition was made popular by Protestant reformer Martin Luther in the 16th century. Um, Martin Luther, not yeah. the king. No, not the king. <laughs> It said, in general, the Protestantism uh, oh. flourished and Catholic traditions such as saints. So the ones that are always fighting with the Catholics. <laughs> yeah. Protestants. Yeah. Uh, Catholic traditions such as Saints Day declined, thus boosting the popularity of gift-giving alternatives to St. Nicholas, such as Santa Claus. Um, oh. Yeah. So that's what it said it was like the write up about Santa. Um, the reason why, and like St. Nicholas, because in Central European tradition, St. Nicholas is traditionally accompanied by an evil or at least described as a mischievous partner that is sometimes Krampus, uh, but not always. Oh, like his so, devil yeah, they, to his angel on your yeah, shoulder. Yeah. So they. Brother. On the night of December 5th, St. Nicholas and Krampus visit children on December 5th. So St. Nicholas rewards the well-behaved children with small gifts such as oranges, dried fruit, walnuts, and chocolate. Very Cherry's different. chocolate orange. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone gets one in their stocking. Right. <laughs> Pat loves those. <laughs> so does my brother. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not as much of a fan of the no. fruit flavored chocolate. <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> um, so Saint Nicholas gives that to the kids, and then while the bad children receive punishment from Krampus with birch rods, so he basically like beats children. No, nice. not great. Um, I think that's like Belschnickel too, but I didn't research him. That's this is just from oh, my yeah. memory. <laughs> yeah. Um. So then on December 6th, the next day, children awaken to find either their gifts or if they were bad, they nursed their injuries. Um, some <laughs> things said even that they find coal um, and stuff like they that. They find some like icy heat. Band-aids. Like... Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's some I Tylenol. <laughs> <laughs> we know you're going to be feeling poorly. Here's yeah. your care package. <laughs> um. But yeah, so they actually go. <laughs> I don't yeah. Know. Um, yeah, so they actually go around and visit um, things that didn't say that they're like opposing forces that are trying to fight one another, but that they work as a team, like visiting the children. So they're not enemies in this. Like this is just, they go in pairs like this. Okay. Um, so. Tag teaming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for appearance for Krampus, at least, there's many different variations, but some of the more common physical characteristics are he's usually described as very hairy, 
um, usually like a brown or black color. He has cloven hooves and the horns of a goat. Uh, right. Yeah, that's very like, <laughs> yeah, very like devil like kind of right description there are devil yeah <laughs> yeah i did put a bunch of pictures in the drive it was fun looking up because there's like traditional pictures and stuff about him from, oh like, i the bet very early 1900s which is kind of cool um Ooh. he's known to have a long pointed tongue think like kiss um gene simmons a kiss man <laughs> uh and he is also said to have very sharp fangs but not like not like lion fangs where they're like protruding from his mouth, but just like very sharp, like fang like teeth. Uh, okay. He carries chains, uh, which are thought to symbolize possibly the bindings of the devil by the Christian church. Um, others say oh, that the, wow. the chains um, may just be like a lost kind of ritual thing um, or tradition that they like, it really isn't documented. Okay. And the chains are also sometimes accompanied or sometimes accompanied with bells of various sizes kind of hanging off them. And Ooh. he is known to swat. Jingle bells. <laughs> well, not very fun because he's known to hit the children with the chains when it has belt, the bells oh. on it. So I mean jingle bells, but you're getting beat with it. Um, There's a bell pattern on your <laughs> ass. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. I'm looking at some of the pictures now. It's so amazing. Yeah. <laughs> he has a very long tongue. It like would I describe it as like going to his belly button. It's quite interesting. Yes. I can't wait um, to put some of those pictures on Instagram. I've yeah. seen some and wanted to have a reason to. Oh, it's so long. <laughs> yeah, so long. <laughs> it's like the size of his leg. <laughs> we'll get into the inappropriateness that people have <laughs> done with Crip. Krampus with a child postcard? No! <laughs> Why? Oh, Germany. Um, so, in more pagan origin, he carries a root um, instead of the chains, which is a bundle of birch branches that he uses mm. to swat the children. And some representations of the root, um, some representations, the root is also either replaced with a whip um, so it could be a whip, it could be the root branches, or it could be the chains. Um, He's whipping you with something. <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, Krampus sometimes appears with a sack or basket strapped to his back. Uh, this is said to hold and be used to take the evil children. So the kids that are really, really bad, they don't just get like hit. They get taken by him and they will likely be drowned eaten or taken to hell uh or it said taken back to his lair and tortured so you really oh, don't all good me. options right yeah. <laughs> my my favorite picture is the picture oh, i have to look it up i'm not looking at the pictures right now hold on um do, 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 do. uh oh the one uh, that has him and he looks like he's riding a like the bottom like the sweeper part of a broomstick and then it's these very realistic babies there's one two three four five six seven oh, eight oh, nine babies yeah. he's just kidnapping nine babies I'm like oh cool Krampus. it's a very big yeah very long broomstick, broomstick. It's and almost all these all twigs <laughs> <laughs> yeah and all the babies are just perfectly sitting on it um, <laughs> really weird Ann Getty's photo. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. Instead of them being in like a basket, they're on his broomstick. Yeah, and he's just like, "Hi, I'm taking your kids to die." I know they like... look very happy and content. <laughs> right, one of them's yeah. in a basket on his back. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> so there are also many cultural and local variations of Krampus, which. I I think I kind of mentioned earlier, along with different names. Um, there's a bunch of different names I won't get into. It's very like each country. Um, a lot of the countries have slightly different names. Um, oh, have, like yeah, slightly yeah, yeah. different things, but it's all like the same kind of general thing. As yeah, Krampus. mine has some of that too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but more into like some of the different variations that were kind of interesting. 
was some families display a root that like birch twigs um that's painted golden uh they actually hang it on their wall year round as a way to remind any children who have forgotten about krampus um and forgotten that like if they misbehave that it will come to kind of bite them in the ass at the end of the year yeah. i guess <laughs> um and then in some smaller villages he has kind of these beastly companions um so it's not just krampus there is these antlered quote wild man figures um oh. <laughs> that and then it when he's seen with these in these like smaller villages he um he's not being accompanied by saint nicholas so he's kind of more separate in these villages um it's a solo so, mission yeah uh these wild men figures uh companions of krampus are called uh i didn't look up how to pronounce anything for this i ran out of time uh is this something German looking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A lot of my uh, Shab Shab Manor or Rahan. Shab Manor. No, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought I'd say it with a different Right. <laughs> yeah. Um and okay. then there's also different places that have very like toned down versions of Krampus, um, uh, especially Krampus as light. Like, <laughs> yeah, a Krampus light, especially as it's gotten more, I guess, mainstream. Um, because I mean, it's not great. You're kind of like in the thing. It's they're basically saying that. I I think I cut it out, but a lot of the sources said that like Krampus is literally it's not necessarily about like punishing the kids for being bad it's like that you're beating them so that they will behave and I was like that's very like abusive kind of like language <laughs> seeming so I was like <laughs> it's not a punishment it's just a beating <laughs> yeah it was like yeah Krampus is there to remind kids that they will be beaten into being like beaten into being well behaved and it's like well that's not great um, well it does it is a bit expected though it's yeah it's, you know we we definitely allowed and encouraged corporal punishment mm -hmm. spanking and stuff like that oh yeah not that long ago and i think probably for a well-adjusted kid it probably worked if you did it you know, only yeah. when they were really bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so because of that, I feel, yeah, as you said, Krampus <laughs> light is becoming more of a thing. Um, some, it's... Diet become, Krampus. <laughs> yeah, Diet Krampus. There, It's become, like, in some of the local places, there's, like, these Christmas markets. They'll have a lot of Krampus stuff. Um, and this is kind of trying to be a more tourist-friendly interpretation yeah. Um, they often depict him as being more humorous and funny than like a frightening, like we're gonna be eat your children yeah. or like drown your children kind of thing. Yeah, probably leaning more into the marketable side of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's scary, but only like Halloween movie scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you don't feel like you're. Ooh, I don't know. Worshipping the devil if you yeah. <laughs> show them to your kids. <laughs> um, so in a bunch of parts of Croatia, Krampus is described as a devil wearing a cloth sack around his waist uh, and that he has chains around his neck, ankles, and wrists. Um, oh, wow. This is, I think, the last variation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of chains. <laughs> yeah, in Croatia, their tradition says that when a child receives a gift from St. Nicholas, he is given a golden branch to represent the good deeds he has done throughout the year. But if the child has misbehaved, Krampus will take all the gifts for himself, and the child will get only a silver branch to represent their bad acts. Um, oh, really? They don't yeah. get beaten with the golden branch? <laughs> no, it didn't seem like it. 
that's a not bad horrible version <laughs> yeah um then we get into what a bunch of the pictures are of like the people who are dressed up because these are the traditional parades uh oh, which are yeah. sometimes <laughs> called the krampus love or krampus Ooh. run and run krampus run krampus run 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 <laughs> so people often <laughs> It involves alcohol, basically. People get pretty drunk. They nice. dress up as Krampus. And then they I'm try to... It. Right? Um, Sorry. They dress up as Krampus and try to scare the spectators who are watching the parade uh, oh. with their antics. Um, their I watched. I watched some videos. It can get pretty bad there's a lot of controversy with this because oh. their quote-unquote antics can include yelling jumping and lunging towards the spectators grabbing them picking them up hitting them with birch like sticks like actually hitting them oh. um yeah just kind of like out of nowhere this often leads to real life physical arguments and fights um, where people can get seriously injured and sent to the hospital. And it did say that these parades or Krampus runs are held annually in most Alpine towns. Uh, one of the sources said it's kind of customary to offer Krampus schnapps. It said this like about the parades. Like so I don't know if this is what you're supposed to do during the Krampus run or not. Um and then for anybody that doesn't know, schnapps is a strong distilled fruit brandy. But yeah, I was talking about this in relation to the runs, like the Krampus runs. So I don't yeah. know if you're supposed oh, to offer him those that. runs. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, the runs. I got the traveler's diarrhea, the Krampus runs. Uh. <laughs> oh, my God. The early Olympics marathons and shit. Oh, some of those get pretty crazy. Give him some drugs. He'll be able to make it. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, it was insane. I've, yeah. Jesus. Things you learn on podcasts. <laughs> yeah. Um, we hope to do the same for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's kind of cool because during the Krampus runs, people are encouraged to avoid using commercialized plastic masks so if they're participating uh -oh. in the run so a lot of the runs that you see are handmade um or sorry actually a lot of places even i watched one of the videos that said they even have banned like using plastic masks you're not allowed to do it if you're participating because part Plus, of the all haunted like halloween three taught us or whatever oh <laughs> Ne it's have not thing. yeah um <laughs> but there is a tradition of like going back for um a like slight variation of it goes back like 1500 years of using oh, wow um like the masks are supposed to be hand carved wood so a lot of places oh, okay. you have to use wood if you're wanting to participate in the krampus runs just trying to keep that tradition okay. alive yeah like um that. yeah they're very cool so a lot of the pictures you see are people that either have like prosthetics on their face or they're made of, like the masks are made out of wood um or other natural materials so they use pine wood driftwood um there's like they couldn't horse... have made those tongues out of wood is my only question some of them are some of the carved ones are um, oh there's this that first picture i'm like are those guys just sticking out their tongues or do they have like a super long prosthetic oh, let me tongue? See. sorry i'm hung up on this tongue thing. oh those are probably <laughs> more plastic ones they're yeah. so long <laughs> yeah um very yeah. jane simmons <laughs> yeah um, yeah, so they can use pine wood, driftwood. There's also a lot of use of like horse hair um, and oh. other animal hair. They use like animal teeth, furs, and horns um, from alpine animals to make the masks as well. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. You got that laying around. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just trying to see. 
Uh, oh, there's like this quote I found on Wikipedia that was from a guy, an anthropologist, John H. Honigman, who mm -hmm. uh, was talking about his observations in 1975 while in a small town in Styria. Styria. Um, and this was about <laughs> the like Krampus Lof or Krampus Run, but he called it the St. Nicholas Festival, saying, quote, uh, we are describing in corporates uh, cultural elements widely distributed in Europe, in some cases going back to pre-Christian times. Nicholas himself became popular in Germany around the 11th century. The feast dedicated to this patron of children is the only one winter occasion in which children are the objects of are what oh is only one of the winter occasions in which children are the objects of special attention others being martimus the feast of the holy innocents and new year's day uh, masked devils acting boisterously and making nuisances of themselves are known in germany since at least the 16th century, while the animal mask devils combining dreadful comic antics appeared in medieval church plays. So there was like a history kind of uh, like animal masks being used in plays that the church would put on. And this mm. kind of also fueled like um, Krampus plays and the Krampus run um, and people okay, dressing yeah. up. Yeah, masks go back for a <laughs> long time. Yeah, uh, a large literature, much of it by European folklorists, bears on these subjects, saying Austrians in the community we studied are quite aware of heathen elements being blended with Christian elements in the St. Nicholas customs and in other traditional winter ceremonies. They believe Krampus derives from a pagan supernatural who was assimilated, uh, assimilated to the Christian devil. Um, which we'll kind of get into. It oh. led to some attempting to ban um, a bunch of the Krampus traditions in different towns. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, so getting to like some of the other Krampus things they do, there's Krampus Nacht, um, which Ooh, is on Krampus December. Night? Yeah, on December 5th. That's the day that him and uh, St. Nicholas go around. Um, so as you said, it's called Krampus Night. Krampus appears, can also, while well, like visiting houses, he can appear on the streets of town, sometimes accompanied by St. Nicholas, or on his own. Um, it said traditionally, like a lot of towns have somebody kind of nominated to do this, where he'll dress specifically as Krampus and kind of go through the streets of the town on this day. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> yeah he can visit the homes and businesses um if he's accompanied by saint nicholas uh saint nicholas usually appears in eastern rite vestments of a bishop and carries this big golden ceremonial staff and oh. together they ask people about their behavior and may even hand out small gifts um which is kind of cool yeah it also said that sometimes adults use uh, Krampus Nacht or Krampus Night to themselves dress up as Krampus in order to scare. It didn't specify if it was their own <laughs> children or other people's children at their own homes. Hopefully you spread the love around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll scare yours, you scare mine. <laughs> I don't know why, that just seems like the better deal somehow <laughs> yeah um i don't have to oh there's a bit more uh there's uh perchant love yeah perchant love ah, um i don't know if you're familiar <laughs> yeah this was seasonal plays in the alpine region called nicolaspiel or nicholas play which focused oh. on Nicholas's competition for human souls and the question of morality. Um, in the plays, he would often reward children for scholarly efforts rather than just good behavior. And oh. <laughs> these seasonal plays uh, 
started featuring more pagan traditions and they slowly became entwined with the Catholic Church. People began masquerading as a devilish figure known as the Perch each year in November and January. Um, okay. Yeah, it's a two-legged humanoid goat with a giraffe-like neck and wears animal furs. Um, and the it said, different than Krampus, who typically is depicted as having two horns, perched in uh, normally have four to ten horns. So they're super horny. Interesting. Um, this word, perched in, comes up in mine. Okay. Yeah, we we talked about lore from the same sort of region. Yeah. So, well, there's a lot. There. I mean, most of the it's Christmas just, stuff is like yeah. European. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah, uh, yeah, like a lot of the European myths, they're they're cool. Yeah, I think there's just some overlap, which is really cool. Yeah. It's very interesting. The I only have a bit more about them just saying that um people who dressed up as the perched each year marched in procession known as the perchenlafen which okay. were regarded as the earlier form of the krampus run and oh. yeah so this is like the precursor to krampus it focused on people dressing huh. up and marching through the streets in order to eliminate or get rid of the ghosts of winter and it goes back about okay. 1500 years and eventually kind of through that it evolved and the Persian law introduced Saint Nicholas so it was Saint Nicholas and the Persian law um introduced Saint Nicholas because he normally has like kind of a menacing spirit with him um <laughs> focused on Saint Nicholas's good morals and the perch kind of slowly evolved into what is now known as Krampus and was made to work alongside as well as be subjected to Saint Nicholas's will um so it's kind of said like saint nicholas kind of controls krampus to a certain point so he doesn't just go all like batshit crazy at christmas time it is kind of like a targeted controlled child beating i don't know <laughs> it's interesting i'm trying to like just um rectify or reconcile that sort of interpretation just with the interpretation from like i said the perch perched in love i think those that, yeah I think that word comes up in my case and i'll you'll you'll yeah. you'll know when it comes up and it's like oh cool. okay so like you know it's almost like two sides to the same coin like or the yeah. same story or whatever it's like a little bit different when i'm hearing you tell it but i'm like oh okay i know yeah i know of the well it happens i mean i've run across a lot of stuff um like we've talked about like death omens where when you research death omens like a yeah. lot of stuff came up but we've run across a lot of stuff since then that are also death omens that didn't come up when you looked up death omens like, oh yeah for <laughs> sure for sure yeah <laughs> um yeah lots of stories <laughs> so so i had kind of mentioned that they did attempt to ban a lot of the krampus traditions this was kind of in the 1930s with World War II going on. They said there was not as much interest as this because they were focusing on the war. There was also an election in Austria, which kind of led to, um, there was like a regime that was in under the clerical fascists Fatherlands Front and the Christian Social Party. So they're, as you could probably tell by the name, they're probably wanting to like, dampen down on associating saint nicholas with like krampus and like people getting drunk and running through the streets and that kind of stuff oh, um okay. yeah because they're a christian social party um they also tried to ban him because of his resemblance to the devil um okay <laughs> it didn't really work they said in the 1950s the government distributed pamphlet pamphlets entitled Krampus is an evil man. They handed these out to the public. Um, most Thanks sources, man. right? Uh, most of these bans were not effective or even really easily enforced due to the sparse population. They were pretty spread out. There was also a lot of rugged environments, so people weren't really traveling to these towns a lot. So 
it really wasn't mm. getting enforced. And because of this, all these Krampus traditions remained. Um, a couple more, or I guess the last tradition I have um, is the Krampus carton, which kind of oh. started, uh, it said in like the 19th century, um, particularly in Germany, which it, <laughs> you laughed at because you said the postcard and you're like, oh, Germany, because um, that's exactly what this is. And that's Krampus being featured on like greeting cards and postcards. Um, Germany, Austria, all of them. Yeah. They're so there was crazy like, cool. <laughs> a huge boom in the 19th century with this thing. So there's a lot of really old uh, like traditional greeting cards with Krampus, which a bunch of those oh, pictures are shit. from. Um, yes. Looking at them now. Yeah. One of them, he's uh, like almost, have you heard of those little pins and stuff you can get when they call it like chibi style, where they like make you into like a oh, big headed yeah. kind of avatar little thing? <laughs> One of those. Oh, yeah. Russ Vom Krampus and his like head's really yeah. big, but his body's kind of small. Yeah, those are oh, yeah, some of the greeting cards. Chained. Yeah. Yeah, that's what a few hell? of the greeting cards. The Grossbaum <laughs> Krampus actually means greetings from Krampus. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And Let's just go make these. They're amazing. <laughs> there's actually one of the sources said there was a renewal on Etsy and stuff about people making these greeting cards. There's apparently no a whole way. bunch of stores. So um, it is becoming more of a thing. But these greeting cards usually have funny rhymes or poems tied to them too uh okay. Krampus, Krampus is often shown looming over children um gonna be like beating them taking them away whatever um sometimes he's depicted as having one human foot and one cloven foot oh. um and then some of the cards are even kind of scandalous. I didn't Google these, but one of the videos I watched showed a couple, and I was like, eh. Um, yeah. <laughs> and these are showing Krampus pursuing kind of women. Uh, sometimes he's proposing to them. Uh, or, oh, okay. Yeah, it's like he... Yeah, there was things about like him spanking women and like all this stuff. There's people are getting getting His naughty with Krampus. Sound like harlequin romance. A hundred percent. Yeah. Poor Krampus. He's heaving bosoms. <laughs> yes, a hundred percent. Yeah. Um there's also even the one source said ones depicting Krampus as a large woman who's whipping these like tiny men with her birch sticks and then carrying oh. them off in her satchel. Um, yeah. <laughs> Krampus. Nice. Uh, <laughs> I think I saw that one. <laughs> yeah. Sexy Krampus cards, I guess, is like a thing. <laughs> um, hey, there's sexy cryptids. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Ugh, uh, the tongue, though. It's, I don't know. I don't know if I'd call that sexy. <laughs> yeah it's, I, it's very pointed in the picture i'm looking at right now <laughs> yeah like, it's very much depicted that way in like a lot curls. of the things yeah. yeah it's curling under like a little j <laughs> yeah um the last picture in there though is um some of the wooden masks it's like that really big picture um they typically yes. will have a hole in the mouth for the person's mouth and then they have kind of a hole in the under eye bags for the person's eyes um oh, they're creepy yeah but those are like hand carved very very cool there's some really talented Ooh. people um oh yeah way better yeah. than some little plastic you know <laughs> paper plate yeah. thing you can get <laughs> Mask. um i only have a little bit more or not a little bit but just a few more paragraphs uh just kind of about what's going on today um as i kind of touched on or we kind of talked about like the commercialization of pretty much everything in the world eventually happens and people have complained in recent years about how commercialized krampus and the krampus law has become really with uh, <laughs> party poopers <laughs> yeah i mean it happens with basically everything everybody starts trying to be able to make a yeah. buck out of it 
like just because you can buy merch for something doesn't mean you have to <laughs> yeah exactly um it doesn't mean it's being like disrespectful towards it yeah um so with this like krampus as a figure has become known in more american pop culture through appearances in movies like the one that we said we watched uh he's also appeared yeah. in video games and tv shows um, it also said that this is quite popular because of the ever-growing bah humbug attitude, um, oh. <laughs> kind of like the Grinch thing of like people just searching for different ways to celebrate the season in kind of a non-traditional way. That's um, the festivist part. <laughs> That's what that <laughs> holiday stems from. I don't want the commercialized uh, crap. <laughs> yeah said that because of this krampus is not quite depicted as menacing or as frightening as he once was in a lot of places um which can be a good thing because communities that have toned down some of these celebrations or offered um presentations so they'll kind of have like i guess town halls or like meetings because of the influxes of people who are new to the area who may not have oh. grown up with Krampus if they moved to this place and then all of a sudden there's drunk people in the street trying to beat them with sticks. Like, <laughs> it could be pretty frightening for people. So they you better said that, talk to the Americans, make sure they're not yeah. back in heat. <laughs> Are you okay? Um, it also said just don't in like, shoot them just because they say they're Krampus. <laughs> right? It also said just because they're in Europe, there's a lot of like refugee families and children. They obviously like mm. don't want to scare um or traumatize anybody with like yeah. these traditions. So they they have toned it down a bit, but they're also offering like informative sessions where they'll like teach you about the history so that you understand Aww. it so that you um, won't be like scared and maybe want to participate in it, which is pretty That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so uh, on the flip side of that, obviously people are always going to find reasons to get away with being an asshole. So people <laughs> have been known to use the kind of, anonymousness of like wearing the mask and they also mm. the historical acceptance of the krampus behavior at the parades of being drunk kind of like touching people without their permission hitting them grabbing them picking them up carrying them away um that's all like normally acceptable so people try and get away with a lot of shit like during the things um yeah, and take it too far that leads to a lot of people being charged with drunken disorderly conduct. <clears throat> they said at almost every Krampus law, like people get arrested, people are actually assaulted, and it's become like a very bad thing. Like at almost every single one of those, this is happening now. Um, yeah, I could see that. It's yeah, or at least like that's where you're like kind of embracing being unruly. So yeah, and it also said that um and almost everyone like physical fights happen whether you're like trying to defend somebody or what have you um occasionally spectators also try and fight back and end up attacking the krampuses for their antics and what they're doing maybe if they took it too far or something mm. um one example said that in 2013 there was a Krampus loft where eight people were injured, mostly with broken bones, and admitted to the hospital for, like, care, while over 60 other patients were treated on an outpatient basis for injuries. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So, like, 68 people got injured one year on the one event. Um, That's high for non-Americans. No. Yeah, I'm just alienating our American listenership tonight. I'm sorry. We're Canadians. We can be stupid too. <laughs> my my last thing yeah. was just a cute little quote. It was um by an actor I really like who's Austrian. His name's Christoph Waltz. Waltz. Christoph Waltz. Um. Well, that sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah, he was in <laughs> Inglorious Bastards. He's the Nazi guy in our oh, Inglorious okay. Bastards, and okay, I yeah, he's in a lot of stuff. stuff too, then, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Very, if you heard his voice, you would know exactly what you've seen him from because he has a very right. distinct voice. Um, and this was one of the examples that said, because he's Austrian, he, um, it said that he famously joked about the Krampus tradition in a 2014 interview on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon saying, quote, <sighs> St. Nicholas comes with the praise and presence and wisdom and Krampus comes with a stick, a bag, and he threatens you. If you weren't got, <laughs> if you weren't good, you get stuck in the bag and hit and shipped off. And that was his quote. I thought that was kind of funny. Um, and I just love the Christoph bad Watts. dads taking advantage of that. Oh no, yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, but that that's that everything cool. I learned about Krampus. <laughs> um, there was I... a bit more like local, like kind of things i took out some details but yeah yeah it's really cool <laughs> um i kind of knew about some of it but i didn't know about like the specific plays and parades and the run that they do and yeah i guess the traditions of it the masks and stuff it's pretty important oh. to a lot of people which yeah, it's very I cool love, and interesting. I do love the masks. <laughs> yeah, the masks are like amazing. You would not believe some of them that are carved out of wood. You see them going around and they're so like beautiful and intricate. They really don't look like they could have been hand carved. Um yeah. There was a good video. I'll put it on the website and it was a a guy that actually carves some of the masks and he said he started carving them at a really young age. Um yeah. I don't know if he I think he charges money for them. You can like purchase his masks, but it should like lineups of them and they're just so crazy and all of them are completely oh. unique. Some of them he's more like um almost tree-like where his head almost looks like it's like at an angle like a branch kind of like his chin's oh, kind of wow. like lopsided and it's part of a branch and then his head was basically a branch with like leaves on it it was very cool but like Groot no. yes very Groot like <laughs> but yeah well the beating part was reminding me of something I read on reddit where the person was like I'm getting married soon as like i believe a male and they were like in my culture it's uh traditional for people to come and like smack their ass on like the wedding ceremony oh. and stuff like that so they were like they were like should i buy bike shorts or this thing or like <laughs> people were like spanx or padding like it, we're, and then other people were like wait sorry can we just roll back a minute like where is it <laughs> so, like, <laughs> Yeah, that's what this was reminding me of. And I don't know if it was Egypt. I thought somebody said it was uh, maybe practiced in some places like Egypt. And I was like, I, I don't know. No I've idea. never heard of not it. heard of this. I I oh. know when I think it's like Lebanese or whatever. I think one coworker was telling me her, um, like three days before their wedding or something, the husband's family is supposed to basically come. And they essentially, like, kidnap her from her house. Like, they go and then they, like, oh. go into her house and then they, like, take her and they'll, like, carry her out of her house. Like, she's not, like, <laughs> wearing a hood, like, tied up or no. anything. They'll, like, get her and they'll carry her out of her house. And then they, I can't remember where she said they take her or something. Um, oh, my God. That's, like, a certain number of days before the wedding they're supposed to do that. Maybe I'm not remembering Sounds it Sounds right, medieval because... But the game yeah. of thrones where they got influence from medieval of course you know taking them up to the bedding oh push them upstairs take their clothes off yeah. whatever kidnap them and make them go go for it and consummate oh my god yeah i like that kind of stuff i like learning different wedding traditions and yeah. different places it's so cool yeah, it's so interesting. I think that's why I wanted to do this episode. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. But we'll take a break and then I'm super excited to hear about all the ones you researched. Yes, I'm very knowledgeable about Karampus now. <laughs> no. Right? No. 
<laughs> no, that was really good. Yeah. I, I realized when I went to Google the cast of the Krampus movie, I put Prampus and I was like, I, I, I'm thankful that Google knew what I was trying to put when I put <laughs> Krampus 2015 cast. It's like, do you mean I have cramps? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we'll be right back. So I ended up doing a couple people. Doing a couple. Well, nope. <laughs> Car- <laughs> <laughs> characters. Because <laughs> they're just, there is a few that sound cool that yeah. you really want to deep dive on. But then I get the fear that if I'm going to do like more than three or four, that you're just not going to remember them and I'm not going to remember them. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to do them some bit of justice. So I ended up like narrowing it down to two because yeah, there was like, okay, there's this much on this person. That's cool. <laughs> um, and also my mom told me uh, basically a dad joke this morning by text, but it's Christmas related. So, oh yeah. You want to hear it? <laughs> Definitely. What do you call a one-legged gingerbread man? I don't know. A limp biscuit. <laughs> That's so her, sad. I, I said to her, I was going to say slow. And then I <laughs> sent you the gif of the one from uh, Shrek where he's like, no, yeah. not my gumdrop buttons. <laughs> The gingerbread man. <laughs> yeah, that was the first thing I thought of was the poor gingerbread man from right. Shrek. <laughs> Me too. It's funny because in the the pictures I sent, I had a pitch a couple pictures for the Krampus oh, movie, and there yes. is there is gingerbread man that like attack the family at one point, and then oh, that's what the picture is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I meant to talk about the movie, but I forgot. Uh, yeah, there's... there's a point they get tacked by like killer gingerbread men, and then somehow the gingerbread man gets set on fire. That's why he's flaming, but he is very angry looking. Um, I was yeah. gonna say when you were doing your segment, there's like when you IMDb it, there's like seven Krampus related movies yet. So really, far, wow. Says. Um, Krampus 1, 2015, Krampus yeah. the Reckoning, A Krampus yeah, that's Christmas. that's the second one or something. I didn't even know they made a second one. It sounds like a sequel, yep. Yeah. Um, one called Rare Exports, 2010. Oh, God. Unleashed, 2016. I feel like some were really cheesy. I've seen some of the posters. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, Gordon, oh, Gordon, I'll stop it. Krampus the Christmas Devil 2013, Krampus oh. the Devil Returns 2016, and Mother Krampus 2017 is what it has. Mother <laughs> Crazy. Lay down. Lay down, buddy. Be calm. Has, has, Gordo. Gordo, Gordo has a nap. Gordo has a nap. Gordo can have Fenrir nap. is past the fuck out with his black tongue hanging out. <laughs> I wish. I love watching Gordo sleep. He looks so cute because his feet are always like this or they're like stretched out like oh and he's just like like he fell onto his side from like a standing up position so his legs are just out like he'd be if he was standing up and then he's just like on his side and just like oh. I'm like, oh. I know what you mean. I love when they do like the little stretch and then their paws like come together all like, oh, yes. stretching. <laughs> I look at <laughs> him and I just go, I'm jealous that you can just stretch. Like, oh, that probably feels amazing. <laughs> they like, make it look good. <laughs> oh, if I could stretch out that far. Oh, I, I, oh I bet my all my God. back problems would be solved. <laughs> All right. Well, we're not going to go far from where you took us uh, with the Austria, Bavaria, Alpine regions. Yeah. Let's just just go right back there. (laughs) Stop it. 
Which, like, I do remember a point in time when I was a little kid with Austria and Australia. Yeah. It was hard to know there was a difference before, like, I watched, I don't know, Sound of Music and became so much more worldly. No. (laughs) (laughs) So, this lady is called Frau Perchta. (laughs) Um, Okay. Frau... It's usually what Mrs. Lady in German. I've heard it a mm. lot, especially like I first thing that comes to mind me is Austin Powers, Frau Farbissena. Oh, okay, German lady. <laughs> but like, or like Sound of Music, she's Fräulein. So maybe like Fräulein is more like Miss. Russell will probably correct me because she's taken some German. <laughs> I have no idea. So I, I cannot but, offer any assistance. No, no, I think I'm fairly certain Frau is kind of like Mrs. Because you always hear mm. like Frau this, Frau that. Yeah. So yeah, she's kind of on the, at the more on the Krampus, Belschnickel, bad yeah. guy side of uh, Santa Claus. <laughs> people, yeah. Figures. She likes to, or she's known for slitting the bellies of the bad children. Oh, all right (laughs) then. Stuffing their corpses with straw. (laughs) Oh, okay. And not heard that one before. I know. Where's her movie? (laughs) Coming soon. Like, (laughs) no, it's too late for Christmas movies. Nobody's releasing (laughs) Christmas movies this late. Next year. No. And they just, rem- I know, they just release things on Christmas. It doesn't even have to be Christmassy. Although, having a new Christmas movie come out with Will Ferrell, that does make me excited. Yes. Because if anyone can make another instant classic, quote unquote, which doesn't exist, but. <laughs> it is Will Ferrell and Ryan classic Reynolds. L. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. He's great. Ryan Reynolds, yes, exactly. I you will know. watch any two. Like, <laughs> I've watched so many Will Ferrell movies in my life, and I have not seen them all. But I, and then yeah. I have I'm seen so... so many Ryan Reynolds movies. Again, not. Oh, I guess they have not appeared together, really. Maybe. Uh, I think they have once before or something. Hmm. Listeners, was like at us. <laughs> I, I can't remember, but yeah, no. <laughs> I know. They're both so funny. Right. Genuinely funny, where it's not like, you know, somebody has to be like rehearsed or have their lines written and then they're just good at delivering them. Like they're just. Oh, no, they'd be funny if you like, were just funny having dinner with them. <laughs> yeah. And these both seem pretty down to earth people yeah. so yeah i'm all for that movie i I'm think so ryan excited reynolds to watch it. represents canadians well i'm very proud of him <laughs> yeah him and seth rogan yes i like, love just, seth rogan. like screw justin bieber and drake i do not care about you i <laughs> i like seth rogan and ryan reynolds <laughs> i did see a funny throwback uh, stand up comedy sketch that was Jim Carrey the other day, and he was like, mm, oh, I tell mm-hmm. people I'm Canadian, they go, Oh, wow! <laughs> and like, oh, I don't know, it just went on from there, like, cold up there, eh? And like, yes, I go out and fend for my fish, and we go out on the ice with my friend Nanook of the North, <laughs> just like he was leaning right into it. <laughs> It was from like the eighties. You could tell. I love it. Thing. Oh yeah. my god, it was hilarious. I'll Another send you the clip. If I run yes. across it again. <laughs> Another great. I love Jim Carrey. <laughs> anyway, and Mike Myers is Canadian. All the good people are Canadian. Anyway, yeah, some good ones. <laughs> so, yes, Frau Perchta uh, not only slits the bellies of bad children and stuffs them with straw. But she might stuff you with rocks, other rubbish, oh. whatever, and then stitches you back up again, at least. That's so creepy. 
Don't worry, she particularly hate particularly hates unruly kids. Um, so watch out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy I'm not a kid anymore. <laughs> <laughs> there was a Gravity Falls episode where they hated teenagers, and so that's how they got out of it was the twins were uh, like, We're not actually teens yet. <laughs> well played. Don't grow loophole. up, y'all. No. A loophole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um Okay, she has lots of different names. Um, Frau Perchta, also called Bert Birchta, or Bertha, or okay. I can just guess because it's German. Spin Stuben Frau, <laughs> or Spinning Room Lady. I think it translates. Oh. <laughs> to. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> She has a beaked nose made of iron. She's dressed usually in rags, may or may not have a cane that she leans on, but is usually a decrepit sort of old woman or crone. People no. love to use that word. Yeah. Um, but she's not to be trifled with. She usually has a large knife concealed on her person, often underneath her skirt. So I don't know if it's like strapped to her thigh or what. But And then she just boot, boot, cuts your belly open. Um, <laughs> one source said she had a large and misshapen goose foot and it was said to be associated with maybe why some people eat goose at Christmas time because of her foot what? well she's a she comes around at, at Christmas after Christmas she had some interesting associations um, I also read that um, she might be described as having a splayed foot, whether that meant her toes went away from each other, but it may have been misshapen due to constant working on the treadle of the spinning wheel. So like the foot part that you pressed out. Oh, weird. Um, it was interesting. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about a misshapen goose foot. <laughs> Yeah, I, we I don't even know what to turkey? picture. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay, I think I only found a couple of pictures. Uh, yeah, she's the spinning room lady, as that beaked nose made of iron sometimes, which we had some folklore figures that had iron incorporated before. I thought that was cool. Um, oh, yeah, Miss Sheep and Goosefoot. Um, she's also been said to ha bear a passing resemblance to Frigga. Frigga slash Freya, because I think mm -hmm. they're basically the same from what I've heard. Yeah, the Scandinavian goddess. Um, and apparently that is just because of the love of spinning and domestic tidiness. Oh. <laughs> they must have that in common. <laughs> Uh, legend says you better have all your flax spun and done by the 12th night of Christmas, which actually is January 6th, so 12th night after Christmas. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, also that's my dad's birthday. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it said, quote, for when the Christmas season was over, it would be time to set up the big upright loom, at which time you must have enough thread to warp it and start your weaving. So they just wanted you to be done for the new year. <laughs> so demanding. Jeez. Right. But it's so weird how like, it's like, oh, here's this legend. How did it come about? Well, because people wanted to have their work done. <laughs> yeah. You have to make it a legend. <laughs> um, Frau Perchta's punishment for those lazy ladies who haven't finished weaving in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, there were numerous tales of Frau Perchta's trampling and even setting fire to the half-spun fibers. So she oh. just got real pissed. Jeez. <laughs> if your flax is uh, unfortunately unspun by that time, and your house gasp is unkempt... <laughs> oh no! And worst of all, you forgot to put out any porridge, then you will get the knife... <laughs> oh shit. I'm getting a knife. I put 
Knives out, guts out, straw stuffed in. <laughs> Jeez. Oh. Um, other variations of the story link her to the wild hunt, saying she flies through the sky with an army of lost souls. Um, I put possibly on fairy horses because that was all I knew about the wild hunt and didn't really have time to expand further. <laughs> If yeah. there's real lore other than what I've read in fantasy. Shadow books. Hunters. Yeah. They have the wild hunt in there, yeah. Correct. <laughs> Cause they're all they're like, yeah, those fairies and they're all kind of dark and tortured flying on their horses. Yeah. I believe it is Celtic though. I be, but I'm not sure. Like I said, I didn't take a deep dive or anything. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So, here's the link here. Perchton, name of her army who all look like Krampus. <laughs> oh, okay. Quote, one website virtually indistinguishable from, end quote. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Yes, that's what a lot of sources said. Um, yeah, they did they, say in the ones I was reading that they're described very similarly looking. So it's, yeah, yeah, they basically have been like melded together. All right. <laughs> so, okay, the only way to tell between, I guess, people dr all dressed up like Krampus and this army of Perchton that follow around Frau Perchta. It says, mm -hmm. the only way to know for sure is context. Krampus rides abroad at St. Nicholas's Eve, while the Perchton tend more towards Epiphany in the last three Thursdays before Christmas, also known as Birchtel Nights or Knocking Nights. So okay. they just come later. <laughs> yeah, different days. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Um, and apparently Knocking Nights, a.k.a. Klopf, Flying schnockte, schnockte, whatever. It was believed that evil spirits and witches went about making mischief on the Thursday nights during Advent. Advent, so they would have children dressed in costumes, and walk through the streets banging and clanging cowbells and making as much of a ruckus as possible. They threw peas or lentils at the windows, or occasionally a small gift would be thrown into an open window. Which is pretty funny. Oh shit. Not a brick? No. But like it seems like you can't really do that in places where it's really cold. <laughs> yeah. We couldn't do that in most places in Canada. No. <laughs> Who would be leaving their windows open right now? No. <laughs> um, so they... Blah, blah, blah. Oh yeah. Kids would knock on doors, recite poems, get a little treat. It almost sounds like a combination of caroling and trick-or-treating. Yeah. Um, some places, I guess, around there still practice this today. And Frau Perchta's army, or her Perchta posse. Her Perchta posse. <laughs> also boasts the souls of unbaptized children. Oh. So. Yeah. It is very... If you hear the wind and thunder through the mountains on birch till nights, those are the sounds of her leading the wild hunt. Um, I just also sorry if a lot, there's just a lot of random information I have about her. I just didn't know how to like order it, but because mm -hmm. um, she has a lot of different like names. Another name she goes by is Holly, who's a winter goddess. I assume it's pronounced Holly. It's H O L L E. Oh. Um, yeah. I don't know. But she's a winter goddess and her name means shining or bright. Um, quote, hence her association with Epiphany, the shining night on which the star of Bethlehem shone down. So she's got a lot of associations with shining and bright and like stars and shit. <laughs> yeah. So she's known as the bright one, sometimes grandmother winter. She's said to make the snow come. That's kind of cool. Yeah. She is responsible for the snow we had today. Boo! <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, but boo. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, and she very much is always said to have a dual nature. So either um, she can inhabit like evil, but at the same time, pretty. Or sorry, this also they said was how they denoted the different type of Perchton in the army. Hmm. They <laughs> were the pretty Perchton or the ugly Perchton. <laughs> oh. So I don't know. And then like, this is the whole army of Krampuses, but some of them are pretty and not. <laughs> I just don't know. Yeah, that's weird. But they, yeah, they were like the I'm sure I'll mispronounce it. Shiash perched in were the ugly ones, and the Sean perched in were the beautiful. Um, <clears throat> she's also known as a malevolent pagan goddess, according to some sources. <laughs> yeah. Jeezvice.com. <laughs> You're mad at her. She's malevolent. <laughs> <laughs> but known to slay during the 12 days of Christmas. She wants to make sure you do absolutely no weaving during the holidays so that you better have it done before so you can actually relax. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say what she wants you to put your feet up, enjoy the holidays. Yep. <laughs> I know it's this whole thing to make sure that you're like, like working with the group and then resting and partying with the group. It's the whole thing. <laughs> nice. Um. No weaving on sacred days, or if you didn't party hard enough on the non, you know, work oh. days, you're going to be punished. Oh, shit. So, yeah, watch out. <laughs> um, she's been known to toss children into sacks. She apparently once blinded a young farmhand who was caught ogling at her, but she Ooh. eventually gave him his sight back. So that's nice. Yeah. She's the big wedding crasher. She crashed at least one wedding to curse the bridegroom and the whole wedding party. She turned them into wolves for fun, I Shit. guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, again, things talked about her duality. So I put, yeah, she's equal parts dark and light, fair and ugly. Um, and many things spoke of Perch in Love, uh, which was why I recognized that. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I read it's a masked procession full of noise-making fireworks and people, generally men dressed as terrible beasts with large horns. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. No. <laughs> um, these perch, perchant or followers of Perchta or Perchta serve to frighten away the cold evil spirits by out-uglying them, end quote. Out-uglying <laughs> them, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's one way to put it, right? Yeah. She's geez. considered... Uh, oh, yeah. An alpine cousin of Frau Holly. I think I mentioned that. Uh, and she she caps off the holiday season. Which is kind of funny because it's like a month after Krampus comes yeah. out, out on the... It, like, I read that. It was like, oh, it begins with Krampus December 5th. And then it's Frau, Frau Perchta visits on Birchentog or Feast of the Epiphany, January 6th. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, a month later. <laughs> yeah. As briefly mentioned, she had other names. They called her like the white lady, the lady in white. She's like the yeah. ghost. <laughs> yeah. There's always a lady in white, lady in red. <laughs> um, she has an association with birch trees. Uh, which birch switches, I believe you mentioned. Yeah. Caught my ear. Yeah. I thought that was interesting. She's also been described as a spirit guide or psychopomp. Uh, guides yep. the dead to the afterlife. Very cool way to say all of that. <laughs> yeah. Never heard yeah. of that before. <laughs> no. I was like, okay, cool. <clears throat> Um, she has a duty to care for the kids who have died in infancy, who are also called the Heimchen, I believe. I'm like, oh, which is kind of like, what's his name? His name is Heimdall. He's one of the Norse guys. He's he's oh, Idris yeah. Elba in the Marvel movies, and he yeah. like controls like the Rainbow Road or something like that. That Pat would probably be correcting me on if he was in the room. <laughs> <laughs> 
because I'm not remembering exactly. But yeah, he like is like yeah. the gatekeeper. Um. Anyway, yeah, they have the Heimchen, who are the kids who died in infancy. So she looks after them. So she's often seen as like very caring, but yeah, it just reminds me of some of the other people we've done where they're like tricksters or they're like dual personality where they're like yeah, sometimes good, sometimes bad, mischievous. Like she does that or she cuts your belly open. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Also, the next lady was also a witch and I got really confused doing the notes and like then had to sort it all back out again. I was like, wait, I think I just wrote all that down under the wrong. <laughs> oh, witch. shit. I better be careful. So which witch is which? It's true. <laughs> That's very accurate. <laughs> like, you have no idea. <laughs> I to reorganize my notes, though. So. Yeah, if anyone... I'm sorry. <laughs> but they do have some similarities, we'll say. <laughs> okay, so yes, she's the goddess of the in-between places. So this dual nature... You can find her between places of safety and danger, life and death. And on the Epiphany, uh, she's considered the goddess of the time between the years, which is very poetic. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's, just, it's very much emphasized that she's got like that duality of nature. Um, and they think that all this was just to encourage people that going against the group is considered to be bad luck. So work hard, play hard with the group. Again, this whole... <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Party hard. Party hardy. <laughs> and also they said as women worked and weaved more kind of as like actual jobs and stuff, that it was still a popular tale to it just keep encouraging people, maybe women mostly, to work hard and not be lazy so mm -hmm. i don't know that just seemed to come up a few times um just be done all your work by january 6th so you can start the work of the new year on time which makes sense you don't want to be like left over with things you had to do from the last year <laughs> like january 6th is already the new year it's you're already mm -hmm. you already <laughs> had leftover stuff you did I think, I feel like they're like, this is the amount you're allowed to relax for. And then it's time back to normal life. Oh, <laughs> like, okay. God damn it. <laughs> I don't want to go back to work. I require at us, least. We've already been back to yeah. work by that time. <laughs> yeah. I require at least three days rest per week, please. Yes. I want three day weekends. Ugh. <sighs> three day weekends. <laughs> yes. Ugh. <laughs> Um, but she's also beloved for caring for children in death, during the time of death, after death. And so this is at a time when children died more often and more easily. So mm. they do like that she's kind of maybe like a patron saint that they can help helps their children. Yeah. You know. um, and then I also read on January 6th, they will mostly... You can cook a special porridge for your family meal made of gruel with fish. Uh. <laughs> but it's to also save a bowl for birchta or perchta or whatever we're calling the sprout. And if she's satisfied with it, then you'll have good luck all year long. So it does remind me of putting out almost like the Christmas cookies. Or... Yeah. <laughs> for her. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff probably about leaving, like, offerings for things. For the, yeah. probably at Christmas time for, like, hoping the new year will be good. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do like that. Those things always interest me, or even if they are like, oh, we believe the year starts at this time. Because, like, yeah, it is so cyclical. That's I love when they talk about the cycle of the year calendar. It's like, yeah. Yeah. When does it start? When does it end? <laughs> we'll never know. We'll never know. Mm. <laughs> Segway. Some history? Uh. <laughs> um. <laughs> it's the dog. He's moving the damn door again. 
<laughs> Sorry. Fenrir, the- you'll survive. <laughs> it is. Uh, is this important? Um, the Catholic Church held great power over Bavaria in the 6th century and insisted that pagan practices be renounced. Still, many people did not want to change. Women did not want to give up their goddess, and the church began to speak out against Birchta from the pulpit, accusing people of praying to Domina Perchta instead of the Virgin Mary. I should have said this hmm. is a quote. <laughs> yeah. um, by the 12th century, the church, using fear tactics, renamed Birchta, calling her Perchta. Perchton are frightening monsters, and Birchta, now Perchta, was the leader of the monsters. <laughs> oh, okay. I guess. <laughs> the beautiful white goddess was painted as an ugly crone with an iron face and a hooked nose who carried a knife in her skirts to slit the bellies of anyone who crossed her. Feather, <laughs> you just keep moving your butt against the door and opening it. <laughs> Um, despite this, people kept up their worship. Finally, in 1468, the church officials outlawed the cult of Perchta in the th- Thesaurus Popernum. It forbade <laughs> leaving Perchta offerings during the Christmas season. Mm. I guess I just thought that was fascinating history weirdness. <laughs> um, and then the other... Uh, Christmas which I covered is an Italian one called La Belfana. Oh, okay. You mentioned Northern Italy and your places of love. Yeah. <laughs> I kept seeing stuff and they're like, in Italy. And I was like, Italy? I don't like... I picture what like... for <laughs> With Christmas. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess when I picture Italy it's like warm and wine and pasta and like stuff I'm not thinking about like cold creatures forests right. and yeah 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 like his Christmas legends and Father Christmas and St. Nicholas type things mm-hmm. only it doesn't seem like it's maybe limited to places where we get four seasons or whatever like some places yeah. it does seem like yeah it's really it's Mediterranean it's Although, didn't they yeah. northern Italy? So maybe they do get some snow. <laughs> maybe. Uh, I don't know. I've never been to Italy. <laughs> yeah, donate to Patreon. Well, we'll go... Sorry. We'll go wine tasting in Italy or something. <laughs> We're still trying to get to uh, Kelowna. <laughs> Okay, so the Italian witch, who apparently looks like real (laughs) witch-like. Yeah, I was looking at her pictures, the one picture. I think I found one there, too. She looks so cartoony and cute. And then the other one is very, like, (laughs) Wicked Witch of the West looking, like, pointy hat, straw... Yeah, so there are all those pretty traditional interpretations when you look up yeah. pictures. You're gonna have like the warts and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and she, yeah, is a lot like Santa Claus. Whatever she brings the gifts to the good kids. She does tend to put them in stockings, and she tidies mm. up a bit because she's a woman. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Jesus. <laughs> After children have gone to bed on the eve of the Festa del Epifania, or the Feast of the Epiphany, uh, which is, I guess, a celebration of the visit of the three kings to the baby Jesus, um, that's when she arrives. Her name apparently likely derives from Epifania, so I guess that makes sense. La Epifania. (laughs) Epifania. Um... But yeah, she's got various origins, theories, I guess. Um, One is that she stems from an important figure from Italian folklore called Sabine, sort of a Christian version of a Roman goddess. 
um but she's usually depicted as yeah kind of a crony witch dark shawl with a kerchief wrapped around her head often mm. riding on a broom <laughs> okay dressed in the roman custom said some things i don't i don't know <laughs> <laughs> no idea yeah she's been said to be a good christmas witch though a protector of children um mm. not a witch you do you <laughs> yeah not a witch try. And if you should dare to try and sneak a peek of her, though, expect you to no. get her your her broom to your bum. <laughs> oh no! Up, up, out. <laughs> um, Bifania was in her cottage sweeping the floor. This is her origin. When she glanced out of the window and saw a bright light in the night sky, she paused to behold it, but then returned to her work as she was devoted to being a good housekeeper. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, soon after the star appeared, she was paid a visit by the three kings, which, as you can imagine, took her quite by surprise. It seems they had wandered far from their path toward the humble stable in Bethlehem. They asked Bifania for directions. Uh, Bifana. I don't know how to say it. I'm just going to keep saying Bifania because that's how my eyes read it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Um told her they were following the star at the advice of royal astrologers and were intent on bringing gifts to honor the, the babe. Bifana declined their invitation to join them on their journey as she was too reluctant to leave her work unfinished. She did provide the kings with shelter for the night. After they set out the next day, she had a change of heart. She ran after them with her broom and her basket of small gifts for the holy child that failed to catch up with their entourage. Okay. So I guess that's one version because, yeah, I think I did run across another one and it's like, did she leave her kids? Is she not leaving? You know, it's yeah. <laughs> different origins. Um, some say she still searches for her baby, leaving treats, toys, and candy, fruit, all things, you know, they might like. And then for the naughty, she leaves chunks of coal or onions or garlic. Sometimes oh. even straw from her broom. <laughs> all the, all the stinky stuff. I wouldn't want a, a stocking full of onions or garlic. I mean, <laughs> I'd rather have it than the coal. I mean, at least it's useful. Yeah. To me, I can, I'm going to cook with that. <laughs> right? You stuff my stocking with veggies. I'm like, okay, thank you for grocery shopping. <laughs> 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 so she comes in like all sooty because she'll slide down the chimney. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or she'll like, I guess, Mission Impossible style lower herself in some other sneaky way <laughs> sometimes. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> um they said that celebrations are held like all over in her name i think i read that a event or place called urbania is the largest with thirty thousand to fifty thousand people usually attending Jeez. and nice. yeah <laughs> then you can honor your italian roots and her by making panettone and pandora which are those weird little shaped cakes that are almost like tall bunt cakes sort of i don't know I you see no them idea. around this time of year hmm. um it just looks like a sponge cake yeah uh <laughs> but they said in a lot of things that the name Bef bafana probably derives from epiphany which i believe i mentioned and the word has Greek origins and means manif manifestation of destiny, which is cool. Um, and the Epiphany is said to be the last festivity of Christmas time for this re very reason. Uh, quote, we usually say, L'Epiphania tutte la feste se porte via. Literally, Epif Epiphania takes the festivities away. <laughs> oh, okay. She's the closing out. The closing ceremony. That's right. That's right. It's all over by the time we're mid-January, by the time we hit your your birthday. <laughs> yeah. We better be. Uh, Christmas better be over. 
No kidding, right? But then, yeah. yeah All the lead it, up to Christmas is enough. I don't think Christmas needs to extend into January. It's because they don't have any holidays they can, like, exploit for a few months after that. That's what I think. <laughs> but I keep, let's and, keep going with Christmas. Yeah, because they can't sell that much, like, St. Patrick's Day merch. <laughs> mm. uh, some say we can trace back the origins of Le Buffon. I'm going to keep saying Le Buffon, yeah, even if it's not the right pronunciation, because I'm sorry. Uh, to the XVI century BC. 16th century BC? XVI, uh, yeah, 16th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, stupid quote. <laughs> At the time, people celebrated with pagan proprietary rituals the end of the year's harvest and the beginning of a new season in the agricultural calendar. The mm. ancient Romans inherited these rituals to celebrate the 12 days after the winter solstice and Sol Invictus anniversary, which ended the calendar year. On the twelfth night after the winter solstice, they officiated Earth Mother that passing away set off the death and rebirth of nature. During those nights, the Romans believed that unknown female figures flying over cultivated fields would ensure excellent results for future crops. Similar similarly to those mythological figures the Bafana also flies hmm. i mean she's fertile okay it's it's signifying the new year i get it <laughs> yeah um it said also according to a tuscan custom the act of burning a Bafana doll symbolized the end of the year the remaining coal was placed in the children's socks along with candies as a reminder of the past year and Ew. also, people bake Befanini cookies to celebrate her coming. They look delicious. Aww. I must try them. I have to look it up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they kind of looked like sugar cookies in the article I was looking at, oh, which was okay. the My Travel in Tuscany article about Befana, Befania, Befana Christmas traditions. <laughs> From my sources. Um, and it said, the f okay, on January 6th mm. in the village of Equi Term in northern Tuscany, La Bafana flies for real. Through a zip line, an acrobatic Bafana uh -huh. on her broomstick flies high into the sky, crossing a canyon to reach the nativity cave. So they like reenact her like flying across the sky. Jeez, that's cute. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I love it. That's all I got. <laughs> love it. That was cool. I enjoyed this episode. We hope you did too. <laughs> yeah, there's lots. I mean, oh, so many. It's interesting to like go back and learn how things evolved to where we are today. Yeah, where we like, got these traditions hmm. that we decide are good enough to yeah, <laughs> like stockings and coming down the chimney and lumps of coal oh and God. oh yeah, from like <clears throat> Thanksgiving, which is a solely North American holiday, <laughs> down yeah. to Christmas. It's all pretty fascinating to me too. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this week's episode and. Yeah. Reminder, this is the last one coming out in 2022. <laughs> and we will be back on the 13th. Hopefully, That's fingers right. crossed. No. <laughs> um. 2023, baby. Yeah. Oh, doesn't seem like a real year. Um. Season two. Sure. Will that make us feel like we got somewhere? <laughs> it's it's like year three almost. Yeah, be like like year two, almost year three of us doing the podcast <laughs> at that time. Yeah, well, what March, the end of March or April yeah. or something is when we posted our first episode. So it'll be past yeah. two years, heading into heading towards three. It's pretty which crazy. Is wild. It's hard to know when to celebrate. <laughs> yeah we'll figure it out and we'll 
Our toddler is doing well. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you guys miss us while we're gone, you can join our Patreon page and donate to us and unlock all our bonus episodes if you if you miss us. Yeah, you can. There's tons of bonus content probably. Yeah. Maybe 15 to 20 episodes with all the video shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, regular episodes, the video mini episodes, lots of fun stuff. Mm-hmm. You get all the regular ones at the first level. If you go up to the $5 level, then you get all that sweet, sweet video content. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it's just us making a fool of ourselves <laughs> sometimes, but we made bright white Russians at one point, and now we've yeah. come a long <laughs> way. Our videos have gotten much more fun. I don't know. Yeah. We've enjoyed doing them a lot. We did. <laughs> A uh, tarot card reading. We did yeah. semi failed tea leaf reading, but then we did rune casting, <laughs> which worked out better. And yeah, that was fun. Seemed accurate. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, we we'll, might have some new stuff with that soon. So check in, yeah. back in after Christmas. Patreon.com, Castles and Cryptids. And our next episode, so when we come back on January 13th, we're doing some superstitions that may or may not include stuff about Friday the 13th, because the episode will be on Friday the 13th. So what's more fitting than superstitions? Very superstitious. (laughs) Writings on the wall. Thank you for listening this whole year and yes. we're really, really happy and just happy you made it with us, our cryptic cuties, the whole mm-hmm. crew. <laughs> Catch you guys next year. Bye. Oh, ah! Keep it cryptic. <gasps> All year long. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. This has been Castles and Cryptids. You can listen to our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Anchor, Breaker, Pocket Cast, and our YouTube channel. Please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Reddit. On our website, you can listen to all of our episodes as well as view pictures for each of our segments. Check out our Patreon page to view all of our tiers and become a Patreon supporter today to unlock monthly bonus episodes and behind-the-scenes content. We are working on an Ask Us Anything. You can submit questions by social media or by email at castlesencryptids at gmail.com. Do you have a spooky ghost story, a creepy cryptid sighting, or a thrilling true crime tale you would like to share and have us include in a future episode? Send us your listener story by social media or by email please include the name that you would like mentioned. Our music is by Kobe Affair. Our logo and artwork is by Antonio Garcia. Thanks for listening.